And today we're talking all about how to really get confident when you're talking to this machine right in front of you. I know when I first started out, it was super awkward. I didn't want to look at that dot. It felt strange. And if I was not talking, the room would be silent. It's completely different when it's talking uh, in person than on camera. But today I have a very special guest. His name is Brad Powell, and he is the founder of Awesome Video Makers. And he is a good friend and such a pro at helping people get so good on camera. And so I want to introduce to you all Brad. Brad, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. It's so great to be here. <laughs> So Brad, if people have not heard of you yet, can you just tell us a little bit more about yourself before we dive into it? Yeah, sure. Um, basically, you can think of me as a personal trainer for making video <laughs> and for putting yourself out there, communicating to whoever you want to communicate to on a camera. And so what I do mainly is I sit people down either in front of their phone or their laptop and just like what we're going to talk about today, I help them get really comfortable in front of the camera so they can tell their stories, so they can spread their message, and they can start working with whoever it is that they want to work with the most, whether it's through their organization, whether it's with clients, whether it's through some kind of nonprofit movement. It's all of that. <laughs> but I love how the camera was going. You naturally just oh I'm gonna I'm gonna go talking. That's how comfortable you are and confident you are on on, on camera. Uh, and so I know a lot like you know even like little technology glitches like this. Some people are like oh, oh no what's what's happening. So right. uh, Brad, when it goes down right into it, how to get confident on camera? What would you say if people only have two minutes to hear this video of us today talking? What are the steps to getting confident on camera? Well, the steps, you know, what I think is probably the first thing to explore is what is it that people are really afraid of? <laughs> like, why are we not confident on camera? And what I believe and what I've seen and also in my own experience is we're, we're holding ourselves back because we're afraid of what other people are going to think or what other people are going to say or how other people are going to react to us, to our image. And that's the thing that is keeping every one of us from showing up more often and showing up more authentically in the way that we would like to. And so one of the first steps in getting over this is basically to sit down <laughs> with yourself and decide that this is your time to be generous. It's your time to be giving to whoever it is that you're wanting to talk to on camera. And if you can forget about yourself, you can forget about this thing that is you and focus on the person, the, the one person that you wanna talk to and the one person that you wanna help with your message or the one person that you're gonna help solve their problem. If that's your focus, then it gets a whole lot easier to actually start speaking and start communicating and start acting in a way that you normally would. And this is just a mindset shift that I think is very, very critical and important that when you're doing all this virtual communication and, and we are in fact having to do this more and more, I'm sure everyone watching today is experiencing some form of virtual Zoom meeting, chat, interchange. <laughs> And so we're being forced to sit down in front of a camera and we're being forced into this discomfort zone. And I don't want to promise anyone that the discomfort is going to go away, that the discomfort is going to all of a sudden vanish and you'll feel no more fear or shame or embarrassment or self-consciousness. Those things are going to be present. So in order to meet that resistance, to meet the thing that's holding you back and say, well, I'm going to do it anyway. You need to shift your thinking about, well, why am I here and who am I doing it for? And who is it that I wanna serve and how do I wanna help them? And the more you think about how you can help and more you can think of yourself as a person of service, the more confident you will be, the more ability you will have and the more presence that you will have and the more calm that you will have. <laughs> that it's going to be okay and I'm going to do this and I'm not going to die. 
So that's step number one. <laughs> I love how you're saying that, you know, just, just turn it, you know, because it's not all about me or us, it's about your audience. But what if uh, I get stuck in my head a lot, you know, it, it's, it's, very, it's very strange. Do I just have to do more of it? Or like, what do I actually practice when I do more of it um, as well? Is it just doing more and then I'll get more confident on camera? What, what, what are your thoughts? Well, there are a lot of ways to do this. And, you know, for instance, like the, keep it really simple. Like if you're just beginning and you're not used to being on camera, there's a lot of things that you can do in the beginning that are very, very simple, easy steps to take. So step number one is you could simply pull out your phone and make a video of yourself on your phone. Don't share it with anybody. <laughs> just make a video of yourself and get used to the medium, get used to the idea that, okay, I don't wanna look at my face on my phone, I wanna look at that little teeny tiny camera that's on the phone, stare at the camera lens and speak to yourself and or speak to whatever person you're imagining that you're going to speak to. One really good technique when you're talking into your phone or even when you're talking into your laptop is to get a, a sticky note and paste it over your face <laughs> so you can't see yourself when you're speaking. And that will force you to look at the camera lens instead of looking at your own image. And it will make, when you stop looking at yourself and you stop watching and noticing what you look like on camera, because we're all facing ourselves on a Zoom call or we're all facing ourselves on our laptop or on our phone. And if you just block that out, just stare at the lens and that will help you be less self-conscious. So make a video and then watch it and then make another video and then watch it and then make another video and wait for a day and then go watch it. And if you do this over any length of time, you could keep you know, a daily video journal that is simply you get up, you go for a walk and somewhere on the walk, you give your insight or your thought of that moment. And you do that day after day after day and after a while, you can get brave to where, okay, well, that, that was a pretty good one. <laughs> I had a pretty good insight at that moment. And you could share that on social media and see what happens and see what kind of feedback you get. And that's like the very first thing that you can do to get started. I, I love how you're saying keep a journal. You know, most people don't think about like keeping like a video journal or reflecting as you're doing this and, and sharing afterwards. I think that part is huge. What about the tech side of it. I know when I first began, you know, I see other people with all this great, oh, all these great cameras, they have great lighting, even even a mic and all that stuff. And I'm like, I can't shoot it on my phone, it's not good enough, or X, Y, Z, I'm not, what, what do you have to say about all the equipment and all that stuff? Well, again, you wanna keep it really simple. I mean, never, ever, ever before in the history of everything to do with video, has it ever been easier and more accessible than right now? So. You already have a camera in the form of either a smartphone or a laptop. And so you can make video using those tools and you can connect it up with something simple like Zoom, or you can just go you know, make a live video onto Facebook. And don't worry that something will go wrong too much because inevitably something will go wrong. You know, like right now, I'm sitting in my home office bedroom. <laughs> and over here, I've got this big window. And today's this super bright, sunny day, but there are clouds going by. And so as you saw at the beginning of this live stream, all of a sudden, the sun came out really bright. <laughs> and, and I'm getting blown out completely. Like all of a sudden, you can't see me anymore because it's so white. So I have to adjust, make an adjustment quickly. And... I know that this can happen. You know, like right now, maybe a cloud will come and it'll get really dark, which means I'll have to make an adjustment. And that's something that I can plan for and expect. And who knows what will happen? Maybe my internet will go down. Maybe my microphone will break. Maybe my dog will come in the room and start barking. <laughs> you know, like any number of things can happen. And those things are okay. And what I prefer to do and, and what I really advocate people be brave enough to do is to do what Kit and I are doing right now. And that is you go live. And the reason for that is when you're doing a live stream, 
Like I can see you guys, some of you are commenting right now and it's great to have people here exchanging with us. So people are saying hello and they say, love that idea and uh, so on and so forth. Kit is saying, what questions do you have? So ask us questions and we can answer them. And all of that is great. And I will say that probably none of you guys who are watching this live stream right now, and you can tell me if you, if you expect this or not, I don't think any of you expect us to have this perfectly polished, amazing, highly produced video because of the fact that it's live. What you're expecting and what you're actually wanting is for Kit and I to be much more real and much more genuine and much more in the moment. And this is what your followers and your friends and your audience are going to want from you. If you go live on a video, you can't be absolutely perfect. It's a live stream. So everything you do is going to be there. It's going to go out, it's gonna be in the moment. And it's refreshing. <laughs> it's actually quite liberating to be in the midst of a live stream. And so whatever happens is what's going to happen. And once you sort of relax and go, okay, well, this is fine. I can just pretend that I'm sitting across from a cafe table with one of my best friends and I'm speaking to them about this thing that I'm really passionate about. And as long as you are speaking passionately about the things that really matter, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. And even though you may get nervous and upset and a little bit anxious from time to time, it's all good. Brad, Brad, what if, and I love everything that you're saying, you know, just, just, just relax, you know, many people know it's, it's going to be alive. If this is going to be alive, they don't have the expectations that's too high. And for those that are watching this live right now, actually, thank you for watching. And for those who are watching the replay later, type in your comments later. But if you're watching live, we would love to hear what kind of questions do you have? What type of challenges are you facing right now that we can help you with to get to your next level? So Brad, what, what should we do though if we are going live let's say or even if this is recorded and there's a technical glitch something technical <laughs> happened right like, like i just go off camera and i just pop back on or my internet is lagging <laughs> or all this stuff is happening or maybe everything is happening and it's like oh my god what's happening and <laughs> how, how do you deal with these things well part of it is practice um with everything, you know, like riding a bike or doing anything that takes a new skill that, you know, bicycle is fairly simple technology. Live streaming is actually fairly simple technology. And so you need to start using a particular tool. We're using the tool called Restream and which is a great tool because you can broadcast to multiple places at once. We can be on YouTube, we can be on Facebook, we can be on LinkedIn all at the same time, which is really cool. And you uh, need to sort of get comfortable with a tool like this. So practice is, you know, just like anything, you need to, first of all, act like a professional and say, okay, well, I'm going to commit to doing this. I'm going to schedule the time that I'm doing it. And this is a thing between you and your audience. So that, you know, if you wanna be confident and you wanna appear confident, you need to be professional in the sense that I'm not gonna just show up randomly or at any old time. I'm going to tell people, here's when I'm coming, here's where I should be, this is when I'm going to go live, so people can count on you and they can rely on you. And the more you do this in a consistent way, the more your audience will rely on you and, and go, wow, this is cool, like this is a regular thing. I can tune in and I can get this help that I'm looking for, I can get the solution to the things that I'm looking for, these problems that I need to solve. And here's a person who's going here to help me. That's great. So this is going to help you in your confidence because with a tool like say this one here, Restream, you can schedule your posts in advance. And by scheduling in advance, now it, all your people will see that, oh look, this is happening Tuesday at one o'clock. <laughs> and, and then, Kit and I are showing up right now. And so this was scheduled in advance. And every Tuesday at one o'clock is Kit could be going live week after week after week. And so all of you guys would know, great. Tuesday at one is the time to get with Kit and learn all about speaking and communication and being confident and all that kind of thing. And that's what I wanna learn. So I'm gonna start showing up. And so as you practice and as you keep showing up, 
on a consistent basis, you will get really settled into your routine and what you need to do. You can make a little checklist. Okay, here are the five things that I need to do before I go live. I need to turn on my camera. <laughs> I need to make sure the internet is connected. I need to make sure that my post has been scheduled and I've got Restream all hooked up or whatever tool I'm using and so forth. You create a little checklist and you just go through the checklist. And then if you've gone through everything on your list, you hit that live button or you hit the record button and boom, you're on. And the other thing that I'll say about sort of the difference between doing a live stream versus doing a pre-recorded stream is that when you're doing a pre-recorded stream, you are thinking, oh my gosh, I have to make this absolutely the best video I can ever make, which means that usually you're gonna to have to do multiple to multiple takes. So like in that moment right there, I tried to say the word multiple <laughs> and I was going blah, 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 multiple. And if I was doing that in a pre-recorded video, I'd go cut, do that over. <laughs> and I'd go back and I'd start from someplace to where I, and I would try again to say the word multiple. And until I got it absolutely right the way I liked it perfectly. And then I would go and keep on going. And in this way, making a pre-recorded video can get really arduous and it can take a really long time. And you can end up saying the same things over and over again. And you can go through like an hour long, you know, or two hour long recording that for like a three minute video. And by the end of it, you're ready to pull your hair out. I mean, it, it can be really, really time consuming and really frustrating because you continually are making your mistakes and you're calling attention to the mistakes you made and you're feeling frustrated about it. Whereas when you're live in the moment like this, <laughs> everything that happens, happens, happens for a reason. And so you kind of go with whatever's going on and you don't worry so much. Like you've got to just let go of anything that might not be absolutely the way you wanted it to be. And you just keep on going. You go, oops, okay, fine. Let's talk about something else. And you keep on going forward. And so when you're done, like the live stream happens and then when you're finished, you're finished. And so you don't have to be so concerned about the production and the value and the perfection. And you're able to let go of that thing that's telling you, I have to be perfect. I have to be absolutely on my game. I have to be you know, the very best I could possibly be. I mean, all those good things are great aspirations and you can be trying your best <laughs> to be the best you can be when you're going live, but it's okay. Like it's okay to goof up. <clears throat> it's okay to eat a blueberry. Yeah, yeah. Like, like Brad is saying, he gave us so many golden nuggets in that section, right? It, it's okay to be who you are and know that people know that you are you, you know, everything does not have to be perfect. I'm going to go back to the one of the major first points that Brad was talking about. Practice, right? Whether we are going live, Zoom, with technology, we have so many things to practice. For example, on Zoom, uh, can, we, can we present to our people having the PowerPoint slide on? having the face and having the chat, right? There's so many things like, uh, like Brad was even playing with the camera. He was fixing things and he was still comfortable talking. That's because he had practice and practice and, and he had so many opportunities to get good at that. I actually want to do something a little bit different now. And this is, I want us, I want to, I want to pick on Brad a little bit because we're going live <laughs> at the same time. I'm going to, Brad, I'm going to react to what you were just talking about and tell people why, um, I think you are so good. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen real quick and, and Brad, you can give us your comments at the same time. Uh, so there are a few things that Brad are doing that are, that are amazing. So let me just share my screen real quickly. Now, as you can all see, this is the live that happened right now. Now it's actually, <laughs> it went back a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to play this. We're not going to put on the sound. Not going to put on the sound, but I want you to notice some of the things that Brad is doing. Now, of course, Brad, you know, give your own feedback to yourself. As you can see, right, Brad does such an amazing job looking at the camera. You can see that he's talking throughout the whole time. He's looking directly into the dot. Uh, well, I'm not sure if he's looking to the dots, but he should be because he, it looks like he's looking directly at us. The other thing I want to talk about is his background. 
Brad, I love your background. You know, it's so simple. It's uh, it's a good focus on your face, right? And so he minimized all the distraction in his background, and he made it look so good. Uh, made it focused on him. Uh, Brad, what what are your thoughts to my thoughts as I'm saying all of this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, I'm very much into a keep it simple way of of being on camera, and so my background, you know, literally, I have a I have a white wall and I've embellished it slightly with a floor lamp and a bouquet of flowers. Now, you know, nothing, I have a little sunflower here. <laughs> and this is really simple. And the thing that you want to do when you're thinking about your location, and this is actually a really important part of when you're on video. Like if you wanna show up in a way that's a little more distinctive, you can be thinking about, okay, so what, what speaks to me that, you know, first of all, it doesn't want to be super distracting or busy behind you. So what's something fairly simple that I can have in my background that is still part of like who I am and still part of like how I like to show up. And in my personal life, I really like to have flowers. <laughs> and I like this floor lamp right here. Like it's just a nice, cute little lamp. And so there it is. So this is just a simple kind of homey, um, inviting, make you feel warm feeling that I can create here. And I literally like, given that we don't have a lot of choice, like we're all stuck in our home. I'm in a space where it's not very big and this is what I can do. Now, one of the things that I have done is that my background is probably four or five feet behind me here. So it's way back there. And so I've given myself some distance between myself and the background. So it gives more of a more three dimensions going on. And so I'm I'm distinctive. Like I stand out from the background because the background is is background. It's behind me. And that's people Brad, make a mistake. Can I, of, you, Brad, can I ask you? I'm sorry to cut you off. I want you to go back, but do you think you can actually, I'm not sure if you can move your camera, but can you show us like your setup as you are speaking about it? <laughs> well, it's a little bit hard to do. Depending. Oh man, that'll be a challenge. Well, we can try. Um, okay, so it's gonna be interesting to try to do this, but you, I'm sure you guys will be okay with it. <laughs> so I'm gonna go off camera and you'll be able to see what I'm seeing as I turn my camera around. So hang on a second. So I'm gonna move here. Very carefully. Again, this is all off the cuff, right? This is live. Totally. So right now, my I'm going to move my camera here. And this is a light that I have. So you can see a light with an umbrella in front of it. And then you can see the floor lamp behind there. And then if I go this way, you can see my chair. And if I switch sides and go this way, you will see the window with the shades pulled. And even with the shades drawn, it's still really bright. Like if I open those, if I open that up, <laughs> I would be blinded. <laughs> it's so bright out today. I'm lucky that I have this really great space off here. Like on a cloudy day, this window provides this beautiful softbox. That's like perfect natural light that comes in on me. And that's one of the reasons why I really like shooting in this particular space. So there you go. There's a little behind the scenes. Fred, thank you for showing us your space. And it looks really, it looks really good. It looks really clean from, from what we can see. I bet. I'm you can see, uh, if, you, if I turn around and showed you my desk, you see all the clutter. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what we want to see, all the clutter. But I'm going to put up a question. And this is from Jim. And he's saying, I always have difficulty looking, speaking directly into the camera. Right? Mm. I seem to be looking at the person on the screen instead. Any advice? What right. So as a, one piece of advice is to cover up the screen, like put something on the screen, maybe put, put a sticky note on the screen with an up arrow <laughs> that points to the camera. And I have this trouble too. Like I tend to, when I'm speaking, be a thoughtful speaker. And when I'm a thoughtful speaker, my eyes wander. And so I'm thinking, hmm, and I start looking up here and I go, hmm, and I start looking up there. And man, if I don't like really concentrate on the lens, uh, it gets hard. Like I, I tend to wander all over the place. And of course, yes, if you're on a Zoom call and you're talking to another person or like when Kid and I, I can see Kid on here, 
I can be easily looking at him, which would mean that I would be looking down here like this. And you don't want to do that. So well, how do you get out of it? Well, you know, one thing is just to cover it up so you can't see the screen or cover it up, you know, at least part of it so that the parts that you really need to see, you still can, but you're not actually looking at the other person and it forces you to look right up at the camera. Another possibility is that you could put a little ring around the camera. Like I know that on laptops, if you're actually looking to the little teeny tiny dot on your laptop or the little teeny tiny lens on your phone, you could paste a little ring around it that's like colored red and look at that. And that will give you, you know, more of a target and more of a place to place your eyes. And for me, I'm actually right now using a DSLR camera. So I have a slightly bigger lens and on my lens, I can actually see a little bit of myself on the glass of the lens. So by looking at that, like I, I'm looking at my mouth and I know that whenever I can see my mouth on the lens, I'm there, I'm gonna be on camera, I'm gonna be well framed. And so I just sort of focus on that and imagine that I can see your face <laughs> and I'm sp speaking exactly to you. And this is the kind of thing, like, again, it takes practice. It takes practice. You just have to say, okay, well today, my main thing on this video that I'm going to make is I'm going to look at the lens. I'm going to do my best, no matter what, to keep looking at the camera and see how long you can do. <laughs> and of course, you know, the first time you try, you'll forget. And just keep reminding yourself, all right, look at the lens. And if you put a little sticky note that says, look at the lens on your thing, that could help. Yeah, I have to agree a hundred percent with that. You know, it, it's a different eye contact, right? Your your camera is the new eye contact, and it's focusing on the dot. Politicians, movie stars, they've all know how to do this. Now, average people like us who are not used to talking to the camera, <laughs> well, this is another form of eye eye contact. Uh, so, Brad, so 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 thank you for that. Uh, I'm gonna put up some more questions. As I'm putting up some more questions, uh, Brad, anything else that's on your mind you want to share with the audience? Anything else that's on my mind? <laughs> <laughs> well, in terms of, I I, I want to reiterate that this thing about confidence, like. I think there's a false belief that somehow we can all be confident. Like all of a sudden we can just be confident. And, and because of that myth, because of that false belief, we are holding ourselves back until we feel confident. We go, okay, well, I don't feel confident, so I'm not gonna do it. And this is where the mistake is. It's sort of like, well, you have to, be able to be willing to move out of that unconfidence zone <laughs> or move into the unconfidence zone, move into the uncomfortable zone, move into the place where you're feeling like, okay, I don't feel very good here. I feel nervous. I feel a little bit uneasy. I don't feel like this is exactly where I belong and be willing to be in that space because this is where things happen. This is where the best opportunities occur. And if we don't move into whatever it is for each one of us, that sort of out of our comfort zone, out of do something that's a little bit challenging for us, we're just staying in the same place and we're not growing as individuals and we're not helping other people grow as whatever they wanna grow. Like we're just staying in the same place. And in this time of social distancing where we don't get out much, <laughs> this is where, now is exactly the moment is a good time to be pushing the envelope of what are you comfortable with? And number one, when you get on camera, you are not going to die. Number two, when you get on camera, it, really, you're not going to have a bunch of trolls, you know, hounding you and saying, oh, you're a dummy. <laughs> oh, you look so stupid. Like, that's just not going to happen. And so whatever judgment or thing that you're thinking, oh my gosh, if I do this and I do something really stupid, it's gonna live with me forever. You know, this is a big fear that everybody has <clears throat> about doing anything online. And it's mostly not true. I mean, if you make a video, even if you make a live video and you don't like it, you can delete it. You can just, it's gone and that's fine. And 
I've made many videos. You can see them all. <laughs> you can go back to the early ones that I've done. You can go back to ones that I did just two weeks ago and you will see me doing things that are mistakes. You will see me making errors. You will see things going not quite right, but it's okay because I'm here to help people do this. <laughs> That's my mission. And so I have something meaningful to me. There's something that I'm really passionate about. And the more I practice and the more I learn and the more I explore this thing that I'm really interested in, the more it's meaningful to me, the more I am finding my passion. And this is the kind of exploration that you wanna be on that will bring your confidence into place. So people make the mistake of thinking, I have to wait for my passion to kick in before I can do this. Because if I'm not passionate, then it won't be any good or it won't be worth doing. And that's exactly backwards. Passion and confidence comes from your practice. So if you're putting in the time and you're putting in the reps and you're putting in the days of, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it consistently. Even if you only did a video once per week, everybody's got 10 or 15 minutes to spend getting in front of the camera and doing a live video one time per week. Everyone can do that. No one can say they don't have time for that. So you commit to doing it. And after doing it for 10 weeks or 12 weeks or 20 weeks, once a week, 15 minutes a week, great. Do it for eight minutes a week, eight minutes a week for 10 weeks. You know, everyone can do that amount of time. And if you do that, what will happen is a couple of things. One is that you get on and you start speaking about something that you totally believe in, that is totally fascinating and that you're really curious about. And you explore whatever that is, whatever that topic is for you, whatever that exploration wants to be. And the more you explore and the more you interact with other people who come on and go, you're interested in that? You find that meaningful? Well. I find that meaningful too. Like that's really interesting to me. And then you start talking back and forth to them, which you can do with live video. You can go back and forth just like we're doing here. And this is where your passion starts to kick in. I mean, when was the last time you sat down at a cafe and had a really meaningful conversation with someone? Hmm? You know, so when you're there and you're having that in-person conversation with someone, that's when your passion starts to kick in. And so the same kind of thing can happen for you when you're talking to your lens <laughs> and when you're on video, it really can. And it will only come from doing it with some kind of repetition, some kind of practice, some kind of commitment to showing up on a regular basis. With that practice will come the passion. With that practice will come the confidence. With that practice will come the ease of saying, okay, well, I'm the kind of person who is willing to sit down in front of the camera. I am that person, it's now part of my identity. It's what I do for lunch. <laughs> it could be what you do for lunch every other day, you know, like whatever, just however habit you want to create, you wanna turn this into a habit and the rest of the stuff will come along with it. You will find really cool, meaningful conversations with people. You will have really passionate discussions with a whole bunch of folks. Like imagine speaking passionately to a group of 500 people on a live stream, that would be amazing. <laughs> and we all have the opportunity to do it. Just takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of willingness to get over. Okay, I'm going to get in front of the lens and I'm going to start. Wow. I just have to say, if you are all loving what Brad is saying, let him know in the comments. If you are on, uh, if you are on here live, just let us know what you're thinking. Jim is saying, thank you. Right. And then we have Cornisha saying, uh, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. So, Brad, I, I love what you're saying. And if you all are loving what Brad is saying, let us know. You can press the like button. You can tell Brad. You can let us know more of your questions. And if you would like more content just like this, subscribe to the Boston Speaks YouTube channel. And also, if you want to keep on following Brad, Brad, where's the best place to keep in touch with you and, and to start following you? Well, you can find me on YouTube at my channel is called Brad Powell Video, Brad Powell Video. And another thing that you can hook up with is that every single Thursday at three, this is easy to remember, Thursday at three, that's three o'clock Eastern time. Thursday at three, I go live every week. I do a series called Live Stream Stories. And so what I'm doing is I'm talking to other people 
who are practicing with this medium of live streaming. And we are telling our stories <laughs> and sort of push who are the people who are pushing the envelope with this new medium? And what kind of stories can we share about what they are learning along the way? And this is the kind of thing that I so much believe that the ability that we have these days to go live and to be literally broadcasting, like each one of us has the chance to be our own media company. And it doesn't matter, like whatever you're doing, like I just don't understand. Like if you're a musician or if you're an artist of some kind and you know, you have fans, you have actual literal fans and those fans don't just wanna hear your songs or just wanna see your paintings or wanna hear you, you know, read your book out loud, whatever that is, like whatever your artwork is, whatever you're expressing yourself, they don't just wanna see the art, they wanna get to know you. And so there's so much that you could do with live video. I don't understand how, like musicians especially, why they're not just jumping all in on doing live streaming because they could take people on the tour bus. They could take people into the recording studio. They could take people on the back porch when they're having a jam session. They could take people in the kitchen when they're just banging around on pots and pans. Like, or it doesn't have to be a musical thing. They could take people into their, you know, room where they're just, you know, having thoughts about something or other, or the process of coming up with a new piece of music or whatever, like whatever they're doing. This is something that your fans will want from you if you're any kind of artist. Now, if you're somebody who is running a nonprofit, or maybe you're the organizer at a church, or maybe you're somebody who, you know, volunteers for the local food bank, <laughs> you know, like whatever you're doing, you can live stream just what you're doing. Like the other day I was walking outside of Whole Foods and I saw three people who were gathering food that was it looked like discarded food, food that was beyond its sell-by date from Whole Foods. And they were putting it into vehicles and they were gonna bring it over to the local food bank. And I thought, wow, and this was like, you know, 20 degrees outside, it's freezing. They're all wearing scarves and hats and they're spending a lot of time, like a, a couple of hours sorting through this food so that they can do this. And they're all volunteers. And I'm thinking, these guys are heroes. Like these guys are amazing. Look what they're doing. What a great story to tell. Now, I didn't, I made the mistake. I didn't have my camera right then. So I didn't, I wasn't able to shoot that particular live stream, but that's the kind of thing that you can be looking for. And whether, whether you're part of that organization, if you were part of the organization, it would be a great thing to live stream. Hey, here we are out in the back lot of Whole Foods and we're gathering this food and thanks so much to Whole Foods and for doing this. And if you guys are interested in the food bank and wanting to support, it goes over here and just tell the story of what you're doing and show what it is that you're up to. For me, I could just do a live stream and I say, hey, look what I discovered here in my local town is these heroes. <laughs> and I could tell their story and I could talk about how Whole Foods is doing something good. And I could talk about how Food Bank is doing something good. And I am supporting them and their work. And it's just another way for me to interact with the people who follow me. It's another way for me to interact with my life and my real world. And these kinds of things, you know, in your daily life, these kinds of little vignettes and stories and happenings and stuff are happening all over the place. So you just need to have an eye out for it and look for it and then start sharing it. You don't need to create content. You can simply document all the coolest stuff that's happening all around you all the time. And you know, people go, oh man, what will I post on Facebook? That's so boring. No, no, <laughs> like with live streaming, life is rich. Like if you start doing this with any length of time, you'll see that, oh my gosh, there's so much cool stuff happening all around me all the time. Yeah, but you know, there's like like you're saying, there are things happening to us 24/7. We just haven't picked up on it yet. And you reminded me, it's kind of like buying something, maybe a car or something. And <laughs> once you look at that car, of course, we don't buy cars every single day. But you start seeing other people's cars that are the same as yours. It's 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 all around us. We just haven't noticed it before. But like you were saying, Brad, you know, like you were seeing these people. Oh, hey, yeah, that could be a story, and you can also make a video out of that. You know, every single day situation. So okay, so Brad as today is just the start of a conversation i, I want to ask you this one last question if people are motivated after this watching this video if they're inspired what is that one action they should take immediately to get better <laughs> just one thing well they should 
Okay, I'll give you guys something simple. This is an assignment. And that is, and I got this from a storyteller by the name of Matthew Dix, and he calls this homework for life. And so this is the assignment. And you guys like, this is this is a thing. Like you, if you start doing this, you may end up doing it for the rest of your life, but you will thank me for it. <laughs> and the assignment is this. At the end of the day, spend five minutes or less, no more than five minutes, uh, sitting down going, okay, what is the most meaningful story-like thing that happened to me today? And you don't need to write the story out. Just write down a phrase or a couple of words that remind you of what that was. You know, so for me, the example was, I saw these three people working at Whole Foods, you know, period. That would remind me of that story, of that event. So cool, that's a little story. That is a story that I could tell. In fact, it's a story that I just told you guys right now. So if I do that at the end of the day, every day, and I just keep doing it, a couple things will happen. The first thing that will happen that will make you feel like your life is just so full and rich in a way that it never was before is that you'll start realizing that, oh my gosh, I have some interesting things that happened to me in my life. <laughs> like I thought my life was boring, but look, here's a long list of, of all these things that have happened day after day after day. And so that happens. On a more practical side, I mean, that's that's totally practical. Like that'll just make you feel really good. It'll improve your relationships. It'll improve the way you look at things. It'll improve the way you get up in the morning. Like you'll be thinking, gosh, what cool thing is gonna happen today <laughs> in a way that didn't happen before? So that's one great outcome. But from the point of view of becoming a better communicator, a better speaker, a better person who goes on video, you will have more to share. And so, when you go live, you can simply, before you do it, sit down and look at your story list and go, hmm, I wonder which of these stories I should share today. And you can pick one and it will give you this endless, like you will end up with more things to talk about and share than you have time to talk about and share. Like you'll you'll have hundreds and hundreds in no time and and you won't be able to have share them all. Like you'll be going, oh my gosh, I have so many stories, I don't know. This is great, this is fantastic, I had no idea. <laughs> so that's something that I suggest, I highly recommend you do, you, you create this practice in your life. It's not about making the video, it's just about spending a little bit of time collecting the main, the most meaningful thing that happened in your day, whatever that was, just come up with one, it could be two. And it doesn't always have to be your thing, it could be something that you see somebody else doing, or it could be just something that you got from, like maybe you were listening to a podcast and you got some great insight from the podcast, or you were watching a show on Netflix and you got an insight from that, or you were reading a book, you know, whatever that was, but just write it down. This is the most meaningful thought, insight, story for the day, and just collect those. Start collecting them day after day, and it will change your life. <laughs> Homework for life. I, I love that. Just Pick, pick a moment that's meaningful for you. Uh, and, 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 and this is great, Brad. Everyone that's watching live or watching the replay, I hope that you love all the golden nuggets that Brad is giving out. Make sure you go follow him on Brad's YouTube channel or also on his website. And again, drop us the website again, Brad, is awesomevideomakers.com. Awesomevideomakers.com. Uh, Brad, I have a, a side note. Now, we did not talk about this before. <laughs> and of course, this is a live video. And Brad, I want to drop this thought to see if you would like to do it, okay? Since you've made so many videos, do you think we can go on your YouTube channel and critique some of your first videos? We can do the same for me. Oh my well. gosh. If you want to, sure. Okay. There's some uh, real you know, old ones talk, in there. <laughs> we can talk about you know uh, what you think could have been done better, X, Y, Z. Okay, so let me start sharing my screen. And if you are thinking about one particular video, just let me know. Okay, here we go. And of course, this is, I think, one of the best times to look at our past videos and see what we could have done better. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, Probably them, you want to we go to bed. Uh, well, let's see. Just scroll down a little bit. Let's pick one, like an old one, like an old, like a, like a a long one ago. Okay. Well, I'm just I'm just seeing what like keep on. Oh, okay. We're on the video page here. 
This is the video page. Mm -hmm. Well, so these are from one year ago and then two years ago. Keep going down the page. Oh, man, all the way back. <laughs> Any one of these. Okay, well, let's go here. Wait, wait, there's a really fun one there. Go back up just slightly. Right there where it says Thoreau's Secrets of Successful Entrepreneurs. Hold on, hold on. Where is it? Uh, oh, here, here it is. Okay. So let's watch it, Brad, and let's critique your past video, what you liked, maybe what you could have improved. I think this would be fun. Yep. Can you hear the sound? Maybe you can't hear the sound, but let me know. Everyone's just using the same Facebook oh, that's ad. That's an ad. Okay, ad. Go away. Funnel. And that <laughs> Here it comes. Like the sound is coming through, though. Yeah, that's well, working. Walden Pond, and I'm here today with Henry David Thoreau. <laughs> so say hello, Henry. <laughs> okay, I, I I love how you're doing this outside, Brad. I love <laughs> I love it's kind of it, you you're not inside. You, you were doing this outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this was on the occasion of Thoreau's. I think it was his 200th birthday. <laughs> Wow. So I was out at Walden Pond and I said, oh, I know, I'll just go, you know, they have the statue of, of Thoreau out there at Walden Pond. And I thought, well, I'll do a little interview with him. <laughs> now, I want to talk about that mic that you have. Would you would you recommend people have like one of these mics that you're holding or one like a clip-on mic? Uh, I was using this as a prop. Mm -hmm. um, it was actually connected directly to my phone, but it's not what I normally use. Normally, I use the the mic that I have right here, which is my little... Video micro. Um, it goes, looks like this. This this little mic right here. Mm. And this one, you can hook this right on top of a phone, uh, and it clips right into your phone, and it works really well. It's very nice audio, and it's really small and light and easy to carry. Got it. Yeah. So different. Okay. You ready to watch more, Brad? Sure. <laughs> you weren't expecting this today, were you? <laughs> this is like. Uh, I don't know, that this is your life kind of thing on, on YouTube. <laughs> okay, here we go. David Rowe. <laughs> so say hello to Henry. <laughs> As you may know, Henry is famous author and thought leader. And he's known because he came out here to Walden Pond and he built his own house, which you can see just behind me. He wrote his book while he was out here. And if you've ever been to Walden Pond, in the comments down below, write, I've been there, I jumped in, <laughs> and- Okay, any, any thoughts, Brad? You can stop me anytime. Yeah, so what I would do here is probably be a little more engaging with Thoreau himself, if I were gonna do this again. And the other thing that I would do is that, intro video clip that has my branding on it, I probably wouldn't even bother with that. Um, but the so style why, of- Why would you say that? Well, I don't think, I mean, occasionally, you know, it's sort of like a choice of, do you want to, do you want to show your brand or you want to get onto the topic? Mm. And for me, I believe that it, especially now, like it's becoming more and more and more and more and more critical for every one of us. When we're starting our video, you have this really small amount of time to convince people to watch the video. And so you want to hook them in, like the first three to five seconds has to be something visual that they're going, hmm, what's going on here? So with this video, that worked because I'm standing outdoors and I'm standing next to a statue of Thoreau and I'm immediately saying, hey, look, I'm here with Henry David Thoreau. You know, and people are going, hmm, I wonder what that is. Well, the next thing I wanna do is hook people even further on, okay, so why should I care? <laughs> like, why should I care that you're talking to Henry David Thoreau? Like, what's up with that? And what's the topic? Like, what is the real meat in the sandwich of this video? And so if all I did was say, I'm here with Henry and then I show my brand, then all that time, like the 10 seconds of my brand thing going by is wasted. Like it's, people are going, hmm, I don't know. I still don't know if I want to stay and watch. And a number of them will just go Psst, and they'll disappear. So I'm not doing a very good job in that moment of the brand 
uh, presentation to bring to the hook people even further to like, okay, here is really what we're going to cover. You know, so if I were going to say something like, okay, so I'm here with Henry because Henry is the most, you know, amazing guy to teach entrepreneurs a lesson in resilience and independence and whatever else that I wanted to say about Henry. And I'm going to show you the three takeaways that I got from Henry's book on Walden Pond. Mm -hmm. And that would be a better hook. Yeah, and I'm, so just, I'm, I'm just kind of making that up, but that would be the idea. No, I, I agree with you 100%. And I think that's so valuable for people out there. It's uh, people get so distracted. We have to be able to hook them super quick, uh, especially on, on YouTube where, where that video was. People can just X out of it just like that. Um, we have Cornisha asking, you give an introduction before the topic, right? Uh, no. In terms of like introducing myself, if that's the question, no. What I do is I, right at the beginning, you've got to create a hook. You have to give some compelling reason of why, like people are not, <clears throat> at the start of your video, they're not interested in you. They're not interested in your name. They're not interested in the work you do or anything about you. <clears throat> they're only interested in, is there something going on in this video that I care about at all? Like that's going to help me or that will be entertaining to me or that I will like. And it's not you. <laughs> unless unless you're somebody super famous and, and they're a big fan of yours already. You. you know, uh, it's not going to be you. It's going to be the thing that you're focused on in that video. So you immediately want to say, hey, I'm doing this really cool thing and this is what the cool thing is and this is why it matters to you. And you want to say that like as quickly as you can. Unless you're Brad Powell, then it is about Brad. <laughs> go watch when you go on live. Do you want to watch more Brad? Maybe maybe like 15 more seconds. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I don't know if it gets any better. <laughs> okay. Last few 15 or 30 seconds. If you have read his book on Walden Pond, say, I read the book. And if you've just simply known about Thoreau and been inspired by him, you can write inspired. Right. Okay. I'll That's tell you what I'm doing there. This yeah, is yeah. all about engagement. So this is another thing, and this is a good thing. So I'm hooking people, at least I was trying to hook people. And then after I've done the hook, I am trying to get people to make a micro commitment of engaging with me. So I'm telling them, if you've done this one thing, or if you're like this, or if you're this kind of person, say this word in the comments. And so it's easy for people to respond so that you know, like if you're a Henry David Thoreau fan, or if you read Walden Pond, you know, write Walden Pond <laughs> in the comments, or just write Walden, you know, and, or if you jumped in Walden Pond, say, I jumped in, I think that's what I said, you know, something like that. So I'm trying to get people to interact with me, even though this was a pre-recorded video, I still am prompting commentary because I know that anyone who comments is gonna be more engaged. And if I give them a simple, comment to make. Like I literally tell them the one word to write. It's a very easy thing for them to do. And of course, the other thing that's going on there is that if you get people to comment and you get people to interact with your video by liking it or commenting it, that is going to make your video more visible. So the more commenting, the more engagement, the more YouTube or Facebook will reward you by showing your video to more people because this is what they want. They want people to engage with content. If you're getting a lot of comments on your video, then they'll say, wow, this is really relevant. People love this stuff. We're gonna show it to more and more people and you'll get a lot more organic reach on your video. So that second thing that I'm doing there is actually a really good, smart thing to do right after you've made your hook. And I know a lot of people that are watching this right now, they might be thinking, well, how can I be more engaging? Brad just <laughs> gave you the secret, right? You have to manually put it in, comment right. below, uh, raise your hand, unmute yourself, tell me more so they can physically do something. Now, uh, Brad, thank you for your time today. Where can we go follow you once more? And tell us more if you are working on any special projects. Okay, well, the thing to, to follow me with is Go to my YouTube channel. I have just, I just broke 2,500 subscribers. <laughs> so there's 2,500 people who are like super engaged following me on YouTube, which is awesome. My next goal is to break 3,000. <laughs> so you can be one of those people 
to on that on that particular path. So go to youtube.com, look for just type in Brad Powell video and you will find my channel and you can subscribe. And if you do subscribe there, you can get notified of whenever I'm going live onto the channel, which I do once a week. And you can join my live streams every week. I do a show called Live Stream Stories. That is a weekly show Thursday at three o'clock. You can join me actually in real time live, or you can just go to my channel and catch all the replays. So yeah, that's a really good way to hook up with me. So everyone, if you are on whatever channel that you're on right now, LinkedIn, YouTube, you're watching this live, you're watching the replay, go follow Brad on YouTube, on his website, just type in Brad Powell, you will find him. He has amazing live streams every single week like he was just telling you. Uh, Brad, thank you once again for, for joining us today. You're welcome, it was great. This was really good fun. <laughs> I love being able to have been forced to review one of my videos. <laughs> and thank you for doing that, right? That's, that's, that's the beauty of live. Now, of course, Brad could have said no, but I think <laughs> everyone that was watching was like, wow, that was unexpected. Let's see how they are reacting on, on the spot. Right, no, I loved it, that was great. <laughs> so Brad, thank you once again. And for everyone that's watching right now, if you want to keep on being more confident on camera, knowing how to speak better, knowing how to be the best speaker that you can be, I will highly recommend that you go follow Brad on all of his channels, including his YouTube channel. Again, my name is Kit Pang, and can we give a virtual round of applause to Brad Powell? Thank you once again, everyone. And if you have not subscribed to the Boston Speaks YouTube channel, make sure you do press the like button, subscribe for more content just like this. Everyone, thank you.